Here's everything you need to know to fix rhomboid pain for good. What causes it, the four exercises that provide the greatest relief and how to stop it coming back. Rhomboid pain can come from several things, but by far the most common is either from referred pain from restricted spinal joints at the base of the neck, due to forward head posture or gadgets placed on the stomach, or from irritated rib joints in the upper back, due to positions that push the ribs forward and round the rib cage. To fix these, we need exercises that focus on reversing these positions. Exercises that retract and lengthen the back of the neck, that loosen and extend the rib joints, and let's not forget strengthening key muscles, including the rhomboids themselves. So let's start with the neck. For the first exercise, we use something behind the mid-back to help straighten us up and mobilize the spinal joints. You can use a rolled up towel of about seven centimeters wide, or the corner of a folded up towel or gym mat. Lie face up with legs bent and place the towel or mat underneath your mid back so that it ends at the base of your neck. Then place your hands behind your head and gently lift the head and elbows on about a 45 degree angle and lower back down. As you move down, keep looking on that 45 degree angle, keep your chin in and the back of your neck long and breathe out as far as you can. Relax right back with the elbows back too, and then repeat that 10 times once a day. If it feels comfortable, you can relax in that position with chin in and the back of the neck long at the end for a minute or so. This exercise mobilizes the spinal facet joints, but also extends the rib joints over the towel too. A seated thoracic cat cow is a good alternative way of doing this that's gentler and one that you can easily do in the office. Seated with your hands on your knees, round out the upper back so that you end up looking down at your hands and breathe out. Then, still looking down, push your chest forward to extend the upper back, breathe in and finish by bringing the head back as far as you comfortably can but with your chin down. Repeat 10 times slowly, one to three times a day. Next, we want something that lengthens the back of the neck to open up the spinal facet joints and strengthens key postural muscles. This can be done up against a wall with a pillow behind your mid back or on the floor with the same rolled or folded towel or mat underneath your mid back. Here's the floor version. Face up with legs bent and towel or mat in position. Place your hands at the base of your skull, touching the floor, and lift your chin. Then without lifting your head or hands from the floor, use your hands to lengthen the back of your neck. Breathe right out as you lengthen, tuck your chin in, and at the longest point, push your head back gently for five seconds. You should feel this stretch and open up the spine in the lower neck and upper back and work the muscles a bit. Then return to the chin up position, never lifting your head up from the floor and breathe in as you return. Repeat 10 times slowly, once a day. In the office, you can do this with a straight mid back in your chair. Lengthen the back of your neck, drawing up with the hands until you feel a stretch Breathe out completely and then push back gently for five seconds. Then return to the chin up position, breathing in and repeat 10 times, about one to three times a day. To work on the rib component, we start off by loosening the rib joints with the side bending motion. This opens up the rib joints, separating them, mobilizing what's called the costovertebral joints. Standing with your legs out wide and chin tucked in slightly, tilt your head to one side. Then run your hand down that leg and lean your whole body to that side and reach across with the other arm to open up the rib joints. Try to keep everything in a line and breathe out fully as you go. Then go the other way and repeat three to five times each side once a day only going as far as feels comfortable. This is great for the lower neck joints too. 
You can do the exact same motion in a chair as an alternative for the office, repeating a few times on each side, one to three times a day. Finally, rotating the ribs back fully extends the rib joints that have been stuck in that rounded position. Now if we do this actively instead of passively, we can actually strengthen the rhomboids themselves, so this is an important exercise. There's several ways to rotate the thoracic spine like this, but I find this slightly modified version of the world's greatest stretch is easier for most people and works the rhomboids very nicely. Set up with your hand level with the opposite foot on the ground, the other foot right back and your back leg straight. Then reach back with the other arm out straight, looking at that hand and breathe right out. Now in the original version of this exercise, you're supposed to reach right underneath the body, but that's the direction we want to move away from. So just move gently in that direction and then just repeat moving each way 10 times on each side once a day. For an easier or office version, you can extend the ribs in a chair by simply reaching and looking behind you as you breathe out fully. You can do this a few times on each side, one to three times a day. Just be aware that a tight pec minor is your enemy if you have pain in the rhomboid area. A tight pec minor pulls the shoulders forward, which is bad for both the neck and the ribs. So a pec minor release and wall angel type exercises can really help some people. I'll leave some links below to those exercises to try to keep this video from getting too long. Now exercises are all well and good, but if you keep doing things that aggravate this issue, it'll keep coming back. So here's some causes for pain in this area and solutions. Sleeping in a fetal position hyperflexes the spine, so try to straighten up your neck when you're lying on your side in bed. And rounding the rib cage when lying on your side is probably the biggest cause of rhomboid pain. So stick out your chest and bring your shoulders back to flatten out the rib cage, and then try to relax in that straighter position. Flexing your top leg less and hugging a pillow can help. Better yet, sleep lying face up. Instead of looking at your mobile phone on your stomach, put your elbow on your stomach and keep your mobile phone up. You can support the other elbow when you're not typing or scrolling. And finally, move back as far as you can when seated and put your feet on the ground to avoid rounding the mid-back and the rib cage, especially on sofas. And try to avoid sitting in bed. Now I know what you're going to say, but I'm asleep, how do I change my position when I'm actually asleep? But sleeping habits are just that, habits, and habits can be changed. So just keep correcting your sleeping position, and over time your sleeping posture will improve. As you can tell, posture is the key to fixing rhomboid pain. So if your posture isn't flash, check out the video I mentioned in the description box below to help you out with that. And just remember that there are other causes of pain in this area. Internal organs like your stomach, your gallbladder and your heart can refer to this area, as can disc bulges or spinal stenosis. So if any pain persists, always make sure you go and see your doctor. Anyway, that was a bit of a longer video today, but I hope it helps you out. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing because it always really helps. And let me know how you go in the comment section below. Okay, cheers.